Well, boys and girls, the time has finally come. Revisiting Project 500, I almost said Project Jungle, and getting to the 500 baby geckos for the 2024 season. However, just like most things in life, whenever I decide to start a project, there are some unexpected problems with Project 500. Now, what exactly are those problems are? You're gonna have to stick around to find out. Stick around while we show off some amazing gecko pairings and figure out what the heck are we gonna do with these problems. Let's get into it. First problem was definitely a big one. That's gonna be, we have so many pairings to do that I just couldn't get my mind ahead on what these pairings were gonna be. Pretty much, I was just gonna put boys with girls and just wish it the best. However, that is when I saw this video right here from this devilishly handsome, very genius, might I might add, and also definitely not a pet tuber, but professional content creator on gecko species. I made a list beforehand. That's. Yeah, there you go, I just saved you like 12 minutes. Got this list going on. Now, there's a problem with this list. And again, we'll get into it a little bit later. Uh, for now, I definitely see some geckos that we can already start pairing. So I figured we'll do the pairings that we can do right now. We'll talk about some stuff later on, on why there's a problem. And then we'll get into some updates on the other new Caledonians that need to be bred. It's not just a crusty gecko game over here. We have a lot of geckos. Why did I get so many geckos? Nope, nope, nope. First, first up on the list is going to be Skywalker. Skywalker is my first Lily White that I ever produced, or ever got, I didn't produce this gecko, I produced other Lily Whites. He is going to be going to Daisy, my yellow base quad stripe female, to hopefully complete my collection in 2024 of all the Lily White colors. But wait, I still need orange. Right now we have the black base, we have the red base, and then hopefully we can get the yellow base, and I guess I will need the orange base later on. We are only gonna be doing one pairing, I decided. I kinda made some uh, adaptations to the list since the previous video, just because we already have Lily Whites. I believe we have like four Lily Whites available. We're gonna make even more Lily Whites. The cap has a Lily White. I, I think we're good on making uh, that many Lily Whites. It is gonna be relatively from the same pairing. So only one pairing for Lily Whites right now when it comes to this male. We have an unrelated female Lily White that will pair later on, but that's later in the video. Because of this handy dandy rack system that I built, don't you move a muscle. It is gonna be as easy as one, two, That's how you breed crested gecko, folks. Thanks for coming. <clears throat> My God. The only thing you really want to do is just give it a nice fine misting that resembles the rain that is the rain systems or whatever, the rainy season. And that's kind of when they want to breed. So what I usually do is I'll do something like this where you put the male to female, you give it a fine mist. I'm actually gonna up the heat in here. So instead of the usual degrees, I think when they were cooling down, I had it around like 69, 70. We're gonna bump it up a little bit to where it's around 72 degrees and not inf that info, info. Some think it's getting warmer, the seasons are changing, it's raining more, and then the geckos are gonna start breeding. That's kind of the simple cycle. You usually don't have to do it because the geckos are really dumb and they just kind of breed whenever, but it's a nice to get a little bit better production style when you do try to resemble what that cycling pattern would be. On the list, we have Super Dal Jr. This is, was my best Super Dalmatian that was not Tiger that I produced in 2021. Absolutely crazy to think that like this was the best I could do in 2021, and now from seeing our like 2023 holdbacks and 2022 holdbacks, how much the bar just keeps going up in evolution with it comes to like these Dalmatians and the spottiness and every characteristic that goes into that. It's really awesome little dude. Uh, another single pairing. This guy's just going with Cookie and that will be the only pairing that we'll be doing with this male. I'd like this time to have a little bit more variety. It seems with my Crested Geckos I do a little bit of males and a lot of females which is going to make a genetic bottle cap if I keep going on with these holdbacks and then repairings and stuff like that. We want to have a lot of genetic diversity which is why we're doing it like this now. Free. Wow. Breeding crested geckos is easy. Anyone can do it, and that's why everyone does it. This is when the soup starts getting hot, boys and girls. We're about to have some spicy ramen, if I do say so myself. Right here, we actually have a female, not a male, because this is gonna be our first trio that we are gonna be pairing for crested geckos. This is gonna be a red-based lily white. She's gonna be going in the uh, tub with the pattern crested gecko, that being my nice white wall pinstripe. We, last time we did the lily white to uh, the white wall, and then the other white wall, or I guess tricolor, I don't really, However, I have another pairing for one of those girls because I do believe she's actually a possible head empty back and I want to try to prove that out. So this time we are doing one pattern, one lily white, and then the male. V 
being this absolutely awesome cappuccino pinstripe. Just look at that creamy pin, man. I've had some commenters say like, this isn't a cap. Um, I don't know how you get more cap than this, dude. This is like a spitting image of what the cappuccino jean looks like. So I don't know what you guys are token on but uh it's in, it's inhibiting your function of understanding what a cappuccino crested gecko is gonna go in the group so we are going to have cappuccino to red ba cappuccino to red base lily white and then also cappuccino to white wall pinstripes so hopefully we get some nice high white cappuccino and then also of course fraps we're also getting some lily white some cappuccinos and then potentially some normals if i get really bad odds yes we do this i can't oh, oh. <laughs> the tub young man I'm gonna put him right here so they're kind of away from each other, but of course she runs right next to him, so I guess that was a fail. Missed it up and good to go. Enough pattern talk, shall we? Let's get back to the Super Dalmatians. Right here we have Phoenix, which is gonna go into Galaxy's Tub. It's gonna be another trio pairing. This is another one we did a little bit of switch up from the last video when I originally made that list. Originally, we were gonna do it with Ziggy. However, there are some problems. Number one, Ziggy hasn't made weight. He's around like 29 grams right now, which is a little on the small side than what I would like to breed one Crested Gecko, let alone a pair of females. Just not something I really am interested in doing. So either I would have to wait or I pick another male. Last time we did shank with phoenix and to be honest comparatively speaking to like what galaxy and by the way galaxy and phoenix are sisters they're clutch mates if you guys didn't know that um the galaxy to spice pairing just made these absolute amazing geckos whereas the phoenix times shank pairing eh, comparatively speaking it just didn't hit the mark for me it wasn't that good i didn't i wasn't blown away like it was to phoenix and spice so while yes we are doing a lot of genetic diversity to not bottle cap why would I not put the best production year and do another rerun to get even crazier geckos once again? Granted, I can't hold back as many because obviously it's going to be the same uh, genetic mutations or the same uh, genetic compounds when it comes to mother and father, but that means I can sell some really badass geckos and still produce badass geckos. And honestly, that's really why we're here at the end of the day. That is actually going to be the new game plan. Phoenix is going to go with Galaxy and then Spice is making a reunion. He will not be sold this year like I originally thought instead what we are gonna do is have him go once again and make some more badass geckos. Gracie just looking at Spice like just from first glance he does have a rather nice floppy crest which I didn't really notice until right now maybe he's just gotten it with age but just from first glance you're like Dakota this is the gecko that makes those incredible geckos he is and actually as he gets a little bit older let's see if we can dial in on that you see he's got a lot more red spots which you don't really see when he's fired up when he's fired down it's pretty clear to see it so maybe this is where all the red spot influence is coming I always thought they only had a little bit of red spots but now actually like taking a good look at him for the first time uh he has a, quite a few red spot freckling but as all the others boys and girls we go one two i'd like to put the males a little bit further away from the females just because they're first getting introduced we don't want some intrepid we want not you know what i'm saying before we get into some more pairings which is going to be some of the gargoyles that we have left to pair first off we want to talk about well a little intermission about the bad side what's going on why we aren't pairing all the geckos that i originally talked about uh one of the issues is I might have been a little bit uh, overcompensating with how fast these geckos grow. They do go through a growth spurt, but they don't go through that giant of a growth spurt. Unfortunately, while they are of, of age, I don't believe many of them are of that good size. We're gonna weigh some of them just to get an idea. We don't have to weigh all of them because they're around all the same size. So I can kind of take a guess if I weigh three and they're below that, you know, high 30s to 40s. If they're not to that, then I'm not gonna breed them, at least right now. So it's as easy as getting your nice little gram scale. Remember, this is only for gecko use, not for any illegal use like you wrap scallions. Why is it broken? Mashing these guys with crickets, good protein with the crested gecko diet. But I mean, looking at this girl, I don't she maybe my geckos are obese and I could be wrong, but I don't think she's of weight right now. How oh, you're too big for the scale. Hang on. <laughs> I'm going back to the cut method. Maybe she is big enough. Who knows? Actually, getting a good measurement on her, this girl is 38 grams. <laughs> Maybe I have been making some obese gecko. She's right around the size I'd like to breed her, that 38 to 40 grams. She's like 37.8, whatever. You know, sometimes this thing can be a little bit off when you're not putting it directly on the scale. So we'll say like 37, 38 gram. Not a bad size. Um, let's do some others. Let's see. 
it just take a couple of weights. I just did it off camera. There's no really need to show it. Um, we did a couple weights. Obviously, the yellow super dial, uh, something I really am interested in. We're getting a pretty consistent weight of, again, 35 to 38 grams across most of these guys, which... <sighs> Honestly, I just like to wait another four to six weeks. I mean, what's the rush? At most, we're gonna miss one to two clutches, but we're gonna have a healthier, more robust female that after laying this season, she's not gonna immediately crash or not have enough weight and then she's gonna be rehabbed and taken off the 2025 year. I kinda just like to wait a little bit longer. We're talking about the health of the animal one clutch of eggs versus having a healthy animal that's going to thrive for longevity for your breeding projects. It's an easy choice. We are going to wait for these 2022 holdbacks. Unfortunately, the male is one that I was going to pair again to some of these 2021 girls. Ziggy was one of them. Ziggy was going to go to the yellow tiger. And then that really just absolutely all-star male was going to go to my bullseye female. So all those projects are just going to be on hold. Just lets them get a little bit more weight and Instead of that 35 to 38, I'd really like to see 39, 43. And I believe in a month of doing this crickets, doing this high protein diet, we can get there. Remember also weighing these guys, they have not fed in about three days. So this is pretty much an empty stomach. So this is a pretty ideal or idealistic weight for these animals. I, I think I, I think we're good. We're gonna go with uh, making letting the animal grow a little bit. It's all about the animals over here. We're not here to make a shit ton of money because we already have so many other geckos. I think I can slide five like it just doesn't make sense to do it let's get back to pairing some more guys that are a proper size over here we've got this nice light base garg this is going to go to my yellow base yellow stripe hopefully once again I'll reiterate this will be her final year if we do not get babies this is male number three that we're putting on the ticket I'm gonna keep them of course I'm inhibiting you know any health risks that come if a gecko's losing weight obviously we're gonna separate but we are gonna keep this pair going all year as long as the health is good and if we don't get eggs this here's from this yellow garg she is going to get evicted because my god having this animal for now going on three years and getting zero good eggs from her it's a make it or break it moment 2024 is this guard's last chance let's see if she can get it done and get some eggs going you guys probably have noticed something by now i don't have the second rack system built i have been very lazy kind of focusing more on project jungle than project 500 which is not a good idea but it's one that i'm just doing i do have all the materials it'll take me like 48 hours to build one which we actually don't really need one right now because all these guys except for these once these are done they'll need a second rack but pretty much everything that can breed right now will fit in this rack system pretty much what we have to do now is I do have a couple of lone female gargoyles that I can remove and put into the other rack systems that Andy was nice enough to give me. So some of these females will go over into that rack system and I believe we only have one more pairing when it comes to crested and gargs and that of course is my lovely red base red stripe girl so let's make that switcheroo and get that other pair going as well. A breed breeding beanie came off because it's <laughs> getting sweaty. So we got the red base girl right here. I made that switcheroo with one of those other gargs and putting this girl in the rack system since she is a breeding female that we are gonna be using. So easy as putting her in her new home. There we go, and then grabbing the male. The male's actually pretty special. This is another red base red stripe. This is the male that when I took my first facility tour ever with anybody, it was from Andy. It was my first facility tour ever making a YouTube video. Here's the video right here. He actually gifted me this guy as a hatchling problem male. He's finally all grown up and ready to breed. Absolutely fantastic, man. I cannot wait to see some red base red stripe to red base red stripe gargoyle. Well, I guess they're just gonna be well, red base, red stripe, but it's still gonna be a very cool pairing that I'm very excited for. All the geckos that are going to be paired are paired in here now. Let's take another intermission and talk about the other New Caledonian geckos that we're breeding as well. Those New Caledonian geckos are going to be my pair of Chihuahuas and my pair of Lichianas that are still in the winter enclosures. Now, this is where another problem arises, and that's the fact that this is where Project Jungle and Project 500 kind of clash each other, and I need to figure out which one takes priority. Obviously, since Project Jungle was the last thing I had in mind, and I hyperfixate on the first project that I have in mind, it's going to take respect over Project 500. Operations out of the way, let, let's get into the real reason. The real reason is two new enclosures were supposed to be here. One for the Chihuahua geckos, one for the Super Red Toke. Neither of them are here, and I don't know when either are going to be here, which kind of makes things a little bit like, oh, what's going on? 
Number one was gonna go the Super Red, a nice bioactive planted background uh, vivarium, which I was gonna just swap them from one two by two to the other one. And then for these guys, Chihua, they were also gonna get a new hardscape bioactive vivarium. The problem with the Chihuahuas are, I need the plants to sit, well, I guess with both enclosures actually, I need the plants to set for about four to six weeks, which kinda, before it was fine because it was gonna lead up to this, now it's not so fine because it seasons here and they need to they need to get going but the super red's not that big of a deal because i'm not bringing the super into fall because the man won't be ready until the fall uh to chew us, it's gonna be a bit of an issue i think the plan is and this will probably be in a separate video because it's gonna be a lot of switcheroos uh pretty much super red into 18 by 24 temporary pair of chihuahuas in 18 by 18 temporary until that new enclosure comes right here. We planned it out, it's good, and they're gonna make the switch. Leechies into super red Toke's enclosure after I build a cool background for it. It's the name of the plan, a lot of temporary setups going on. This, this won't affect much except I believe it's going to affect the Chihuahua's breeding season. That's because they've already been paired. I kind of just leave them paired at this point. Chihuahuas do very well together, unless I notice one or the other is losing weight, and then I usually take them out. I'll usually take the male out after the breeding season for a couple of months to let the female just focus on gaining that weight back after having a hard year of laying eggs. And then after that, I repair them and they're kind of good to go. Might affect it. Not 100% sure, but at the end of the day, I'd rather them be in a nice, really cool enclosure versus worrying about like one clutch of eggs because at the end of the day, they only lay three and this might affect like one of the three. <laughs> it's gonna be the name of the game for this pair. Leeches will probably be tubbed for like 48, 72 hours, like two to three days maybe. Just enough time for me to set a background. I'm not gonna plant hard plant those things. We're gonna keep them in pots. Uh, both of the pothos will be going with them and I also want a potted spider plant up top. I just think it'll be cool. Pothos trailing down, spider plant going down. Well. You guys saw my hand gestures, you know what I'm saying. I think that's the name of the plan. Gonna be a separate video probably next week. It just kind of depends on these. I have so many projects that I'm doing. <laughs> We'll figure it out. We'll make space for them. We kind of have to do it soon. It kind of has to take priority because it is season and we do want some leachy eggs. So we kind of got to get this done relatively soon. We're excited for it. You guys will probably start seeing some changes. Pretty much we're going to uproot these plants. I think we'll just repot them, let them grow a little bit more and then put them in another enclosure. Add substrate slanting up, some pothos trailing around the ground, spider plant up top going down. It's going to be really cool. This enclosure is going to get knocked out of the way. We have another enclosure with a pair of Tokyo geckos in it that someone's actually giving me for free. Go figure absolutely awesome and then the super red enclosure is going to be on here so we'll have three two by twos and habitats on this wall right here and that will complete it instead of having this empty four by two the master plan for the four by two i don't want to give away too much because we haven't even started project jungle but let's just say this enclosure will be the final boss after all the other enclosures are done this will be my it'll be my greatest work yet i have big plans for this enclosure but for right now it's got to get out of the way now if you guys are a little bit behind on what's going on with project 500 i highly recommend this video right here which shows the original pairings that we did on top of these that we did today or maybe you guys want to check out this playlist of project 500 in its entirety as always thank you so much for taking the time of your day to follow us over here at dakota blue exotics i will see you guys next time but until then goodbye